we've got a problem. Integrated air defenses are becoming more lethal. Aircraft are becoming more expensive. Pilots are taking longer to train and there's a shortage of them. How do we fix this? The answer may just be in autonomous drones using AI. Let's take a look. As integrated air defenses become more effective and lethal, today's fighters and bombers are in turn becoming more complicated, more expensive, and as a result, less numerous. In order to keep the number of aircraft and inventory necessary to maintain security today and tomorrow, the U.S. Armed Forces must begin integrating AI-powered drones in greater numbers. One Navy estimate envisions a future force composition of 60% drones and 40% crewed aircraft in as little as 10 years. Autonomous drones do not get tired, retire, or leave for civilian jobs. Theoretically, AI drones cannot be jammed as the onboard computers contain the AI programming and they are very replaceable if lost in combat. We've already seen the trailblazing MQ-25 Stingray, an autonomous aerial refueling drone that can provide 16,000 gallons of fuel to aircraft while itself flying with a 500 nautical mile range. Once fully operational in the fleet, the MQ-25 Stingray will relieve overworked air crews and airframes from having to perform aerial refueling. And while drones and support roles are immensely helpful, combat drones will likely be the game changer moving forward. Aircraft such as the F-15EX Eagle II, Block 3 Super Hornet, F-22 Raptor, F-35 Lightning, and now B-21 Raider are primed to take advantage of semi-autonomous wingmen. Let's take a closer look. We can think of drones as being made up of three key components, software, engines, and of course the airframe. In a drone, the software or AI agent acts as the aircraft's pilot. This AI agent makes use of various algorithms and command parameters to fly the aircraft, perform the mission, and take either offensive or defensive actions as needed. Depending on the drone type and mission parameters, the AI agent will have various levels of autonomy. A drone performing reconnaissance missions will likely have more autonomy than one that is going to deploy weapons, for example. This also means that the same drone platform can make use of different AI agents, possibly even from different manufacturers. Interestingly, it is conceivable that a drone could be launched from a carrier by the Navy, perform its mission, and then be handed off to the Air Force to land at a USAF maintenance facility, making these aircraft both multi-role and multi-service in the same mission. However, in order to integrate with crewed aircraft, trust must be established between the human and AI combatants. As a result, extensive training will be needed. More on that later. The next key component of the drone is its engine. While an aircraft engine is typically the most complicated part of an aircraft to manufacture and maintain, recent advancements in engine technology have driven costs down dramatically. Relatively cheap turbofan engines are now a reality and can be used to create attritable and even expendable drones. At the same time, larger, more advanced drones can make use of the latest in propulsion technology. Specifically, adaptive engines which can operate in both high-performance and high-efficiency modes. The adaptive engines do this by automatically switching modes for the most optimal performance given the situation. General Electric's XA100, which is currently being tested on the F-35, is one such example, and is the world's first ever flight-weight three-stream adaptive cycle engine. The XA100 program set out to increase thrust by 10% and fuel efficiency by 25% over conventional designs. However, in recent testing, the engine did even better than that. Thrust outputs have shown as much as a 20% increase, while range has been improved by 30%. Additionally, the increased thermal performance allows the engine to generate more electrical power, which is a game changer for drones. The final component of a drone is its airframe, the actual structure that houses all of the aforementioned components as well as the aerodynamic design. As drones continue to evolve, we can place them in three broad categories. Large, expensive, high-end drones like the MQ-25 Stingray, mid-tier cost and size attritable drones like the XQ-58 Valkyrie, and lower-end disposable drones like the Army's Joint Tactical Aerial Resupply Vehicle or JTARV. Before we take a look at how these drones could be used, today's video is brought to you by Blinkist. For this new year, I'm actually working on becoming a better storyteller and reviewing the science of storytelling right now using Blinkist, today's sponsor. One interesting takeaway from the book is that stories give us an opportunity to satisfy our curiosity into understanding the minds of others, and that there is a particular type of character we are drawn to, one with flaws. Blinkist is a great app and provides exceptional value if you enjoy learning about new topics and ideas, but don't always have the time to read through entire long nonfiction books, then today's sponsor is perfect for you. 
The Blinkist app helps you understand the most important things from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. This allows you to learn much more in a shorter time frame. Additionally, a new feature at no extra cost to you is Blinkist Connect, which allows you to share your subscription with someone while keeping two separate accounts. So you're really getting a two-for-one deal to share with your best friend or family. I highly recommend trying it today. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for my audience. Click the link in the description below to start a free 7-day trial and then get 25% off premium membership. Based on their size and cost, drone airframes can help determine their mission and intended use. A large support drone such as the MQ-25 Stingray costs around $125 million a copy and will replace currently crewed aircraft as it joins the fleet. A large expensive combat drone could be used as part of the next generation Air Dominance or NGAD fighter's array of weapon options. Used as a screen, these larger drones could probe enemy defenses, divert or decoy enemy missiles or fighters, and even engage targets on their own. The idea here is that the crewed asset is placed at minimal risk and can coordinate an attack locally. In this way, the NGAD fighter would act as a quarterback, distributing targets to its receiving drones. Another example is the fighter size MQ-28 Ghost Bat, which is being developed in Australia. Part of the Loyal Wingman program, the Ghost Bat is a fighter sized drone that is intended to integrate with two-seat F-18s and fifth-generation fighters. Since Australia has expressed interest in the B-21 Raider, it is also likely that the Ghost Bat could be used as an armed escort for the sixth-generation bomber. One interesting feature of the Ghost Bat is its modular capabilities. The drone features a swappable nose radome that can be configured for various missions including combat, force reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. Once again, this allows the same drone to perform a wide spectrum of missions with minimal downtime. Interestingly, this is similar to how the U-2 spy plane can be reconfigured for the type of intelligence gathering necessary. The next class of drones would be of the medium cost attritable type. Attritable does not mean you always expend the drone. It means it's great if the drone returns from its mission, but it's not a massive setback if the drone is lost in combat. One such example is the Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie, which is intended to escort F-22s and F-35s during combat missions, while itself being able to employ weapons or provide surveillance support. Trust. While drone warfare has many advantages, there is still the human factor to consider. Drones are capable of processing billions of calculations per second and highly efficient at developing probabilities based on events that they play out. However, this does not mean that a drone can replace human judgment and decision making. In an ideal scenario, a drone would provide information for a human operator to determine which is the best course of action to execute. Current and future military personnel will have to develop a level of trust with AI-controlled systems, and this can only occur with extensive training. One proposed scenario is using AI drones in wargaming exercises such as Red Flag. Initially, the AI drones will be part of Red Air or the Hostile Force, and then as pilots and crews learn to engage and counter the drones, they could be transitioned to fly and fight for Blue Air in future training scenarios with crewed aircraft. This would likely go a long way in establishing trust with autonomous systems. However, like most things in life, there needs to be a fine balance. Air crews should also have a healthy mistrust of autonomous systems since it is extremely likely that both sides in a conflict will work to jam, compromise, or provide misinformation to enemy drones. Finding this balance will be critical in the years and decades to come. When it comes to drone tactics, there have been two schools of thought. Initially, war planners envisioned using drones as a bee swarm to overwhelm enemy defenses and strike targets. The idea here was to send in large numbers of expendable one-way drones with the hope that some would be able to reach and prosecute a highly defended target. More recently, a wolf pack philosophy has begun to take hold. Using this doctrine, drones will be grouped into flights of four to seven aircraft by specialty and attack in waves. Wave one would perform recon, looking for targets and analyzing enemy defensive capabilities. Wave two would essentially act as decoys, setting off enemy air defenses and causing enemy missiles and munitions to be expended. Having exhausted enemy defenses, wave three would actually strike the target. And finally, wave four would perform a post-strike damage assessment. Ideally, no crewed aircraft or assets would be placed at risk in any of the four waves. Today, we are very much in the early phases of military autonomous systems. Future generations of drones will likely employ tactics that we can't even conceive of yet. Movies and literature are ripe with numerous examples of the dangers of AI automation. But if done right, AI drones can be a force multiplier and help the US and her allies 
keep its edge in future conflicts. What do you think? Will the next major conflict be fought with drones? How much automation is enough? Will we ever completely remove the human element? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click subscribe and mash that bell so you don't miss a new video when it comes out. And thank you to my patrons and channel members who directly contribute to the making of these videos. If you'd like to become a member, I'll leave links in the description below. Ready or not, AI Autonomous Drones are here. Now you know.